Hey, what's going on summoners? My name is Nathan Ng, and today we're going to be taking a look at the top 10 abilities in League of Legends. League is full of unique champions and kits. Each ability varies in complexity, strength, and overall, how enjoyable they are. It's up to Riot to find a good balance between these categories, but sometimes a single ability is just so good. So, let's dive right into the video and take a look at our top 10 abilities. Starting us off strong, we've got Ash's E Hawkshot. This ability is amazing for scouting the enemy jungle and gathering intel. Its cooldown seems long, but don't forget that it holds two charges. I think we can all agree that Hawkshot is pretty broken. I mean, it doesn't cost any mana, it can reveal the entire enemy jungle, and it's one of a kind. League of Legends is a game that is heavily based around information. Understanding where the jungler is lets you know how aggressively you can play. Seeing the entire enemy team bot side lets you call for a Baron play. So if information is so important, why aren't there other abilities that gather intel? Ash's Hawkshot is incredibly unique as it's one of the few abilities that can actually be used to gather information from across the map. Even at level 2, Ash can reveal the enemy jungle and plan out their clear path. This means that she'll be able to let her team know where the enemy jungler is looking to gank. Tell me, what other abilities in the game lets you do this? Moving on to our next ability, we have Fiddlesticks Passive, a Harmless Scarecrow. Sure, this is no hawk shot, but that doesn't make it useless. Harmless Scarecrow replaces Fiddlesticks Trinket with a placeable effigy. These effigies function as wards and can act out some of Fiddlesticks' actions when spotted. At level 6, effigies level up into sweepers so they can gain vision control. The best part is that you don't have to look at the map like with Rex Eyes W. If your effigies ever spot anybody, it'll automatically ping you and your allies. Plus, they work as mini jump scares for any unsuspecting victims. It would be interesting for League to give more champions these vision-based abilities. Riot's best attempt at a universal version of this was the Tracker's Knife. This was an old jungle item variant that gave bonus gold for stealing enemy camps and also gave the jungler wards. <laughs> now that I think about it, maybe it's better we keep it exclusive for champion kits for now. While we're on the topic of vision, we can't stress how important it is. If you need help with vision control, be sure to check out ProGuides.com. League is full of complex strategies that can be hard to overcome, but don't worry. Alongside our challenger coaches, we also have multiple guides that can break down these difficult concepts. If you're tight on time, that's okay, because our coaches are available 24-7, which means if you can't go to bed because you can't sleep on a loss, feel free to contact a coach so you can finally sleep. What are you waiting for? Check us out! Regardless, let's dive right into the video and cover our next ability. Pulling us back into the video, we've got Uction's Swing ability with his E, Heroic Swing. Now, don't get us wrong, the rest of Uction's kit can be seen as incredibly broken. You can focus on his resurrection ability all you want, but as of now, there's no other ability like his E. His Q is a worse version of Sivers, his W is just a buffed version of Pikes, and his ultimate may as well be a value store version of Caitlyn's. Heroic Swing, on the other hand, offers a unique mechanic of being able to, well, swing. Uction can attach to any surface and cover a lot of ground. This ability is hard to get the hang of at first, but with some practice, you'll be able to cut through the corners and zoom past the enemies. Plus, Uction does quite a bit of DPS while swinging. It'd be really interesting to see Riot add a lot more mechanics like this, since the closest thing that we have to his E at the moment is Camille's hookshot. Anyway, I recommend you keep practicing with this ability, so that way you can get used to the swing of things. Now, while we're on the topic of new champions, let's talk about Zeri. Her Q Burst Fire was designed to give the feeling of playing an FPS game in League of Legends. Think about it, there isn't a single champion that actually aims their basic attack. The closest thing that we have is Ezreal, and that's not even that close. Ezreal is more like a mage with auto attacks, while Zeri's kit revolves entirely around her auto attacks, even if they're skill shots. Now, it does suck that her Q has the ability to miss and can be body blocked, but that has to be the trade-off. I mean, she's extremely mobile and deals a lot of damage, there has to be a sacrifice somewhere. Plus, she's also one of the only champions that can auto attack somebody in the bush. Riot August specifically wanted Zeri to be a fast-paced champion that had a unique basic attack. And man, did he really succeed with making her Q one of the coolest, yet most simple abilities in the game. It makes us wonder what other ideas Riot can explore with this concept in mind. Next up we have Renata's W, Bailout. With her addition to the game, Renata has revolutionized the Enchanter role. Rather than a bubbly and colorful character, Renata shows a darker personality. This is most seen throughout all of her kit, but is most prominent with her ultimate and W. Instead of looking to keep her allies alive, she encourages their deaths. If you're killed during Renata's W, you will enter a zombie-like state. During this, your HP will quickly run out, but you can resurrect yourself by getting a takedown. After this takedown, you'll come back to life and continue your movement speed and attack speed buff. It's incredibly difficult to play around Renata's W during a team fight because an assist can easily resurrect an enemy carry. That being said, a lot of people don't know how it actually works. This makes it hard to use on your allies since they'll often avoid dying and waste your W. A great tip is that during dives, it's better to let whoever is tanking die before striking the killing blow. This will resurrect your ally and give you guys a free kill. Now, before we continue on with the video, don't think for a second that we have forgotten about everybody's favorite pro guide tradition. For our question of the day, we want to ask you all, what is your favorite ability in the game? It doesn't have to be strong or anything special, just let us know why. Personally, I really like Aatrox's Q. Just having those three different casts makes it really fun. 
Anyway, regardless of what your answer may be, let us know in the comments down below. Anyway, let's get back into the video and dive right into our final few abilities. Moving on, we have Fiora's W, Parry. Parry is an extremely interesting ability. We know it's not something new nor special to a lead character. Even though it's simple on paper, there's a ton of depth to it. All Parry does is give Fiora 0.75 seconds of pure invulnerability while also making it so she can't attack. You can say that a lot of other abilities have similar and better effects. For example, Kale's ultimate grants invulnerability for a longer period of time, Jax's E is able to block basic attacks even as he fights, and Windwall can remove all projectiles. However, these don't really compare to what Parry does as an ability. The amount of timing, whether by luck or skill, is incredibly precise. Timing a Fiora Parry to block a key attack or summoner spell just has an incredible sense of power behind it. It's what really makes Fiora look like she earned the title of Grand Duelist. This ability is great because it's strong, but it also feels rewarding to use. Anyone can throw out a wind wall and stand behind it. However, it'll never be as satisfying as using a parry on a Malphite ult so you can go ahead and stun him with it. This is the embodiment of skill expression with such a basic ability. Next on our list, we have Thresh's W, Dark Passage. If we're being honest, Thresh has to be one of the most well-rounded champions that Riot has ever released. But that's not what this video is for. Let's focus on how amazing his W is. This long-range lantern provides you with a shield, functions as a TP location, and lets you click on it for transportation. The reason Thresh's W holds so much power is because of how safe it makes his allies. If you know the jungler is hovering in the bot side, Thresh can sit far away with his lantern while his ADC farms. If there are any signs of danger, the ADC just clicks on the lantern to get away. Besides unique characteristics within League of Legends, it's overall just a well thought out ability. There's a reason Thresh is one of the most fun supports in the game as long as the players know what they're doing. As we draw closer to the end of the video, we can't forget to mention Nunu. His W, Biggest Snowball Ever, is a fun and creative ability which is a combo that we don't see very often. It plays to Nunu's strength as an objective control and gank heavy jungler. Sure there are a ton of bugs with his W including the Invisa Snowball, but if you ignore that, sometimes you don't have a choice because you can't see it, it can be an ability that's extremely powerful and fun to use. If you build AP, Nunu's Snowball becomes a massive source of damage with the size to match, otherwise you're able to gank lanes better than anybody else. Sure, Nunu can't really go through walls like Rex High or Kane, but he forces the enemy team to ward extremely deeply to avoid his ganks. Warding your river brush isn't enough to scare off a Nunu. He'll charge a snowball in river and then come zooming into your lane at Mach 5, and thanks to sustain, he can do it multiple times. Before we continue on to the end of the video, if you want to join an amazing community of people like you that loves lists, talk pieces, and other things like this, check out our Discord using the link found in the description. What are you waiting for? Join up! Anyway, let's get back into the video and take a look at our final few abilities. Pulling us back into the video, we have Draven's Q, Spinning Axe. On the surface, all this ability does is give Draven bonus damage on his basic attacks, which, don't get us wrong, deals a ton of damage, and it used to bleed. But the important and best part of this ability is the fact that you can juggle your axes. Not only does this fit Draven's persona of a glorious executioner, but it also gives a great trade-off that makes it seem fair. I mean, you wouldn't want to give an ability with 110% AD scaling for free, would ya? Sure, Draven's Q makes him hit like a truck, but he has to play a minigame while fighting to do so. The enemy can easily see where Draven's Axe is going to land, which can make him extremely predictable. This is why the ability isn't as broken as it seems. Because while it does let you one-shot squishy champions, you also need to know when to catch your axes and when to let them drop. Overall, it'd be really cool to see more mechanics like this that offer a minigame and reward you for the success. Last but certainly not least, we've got Talia. Talia's Q, known as Threaded Volley, has some pretty neat mechanics behind it. There's nothing special about her throwing multiple projectiles, but the way it interacts with her warped ground is unlike anything that we've seen before. This warped ground essentially debuffs Tilia's Q by significantly reducing its damage. The debuff is needed because late game, Tilia's Q has an extremely low cooldown. If she could constantly throw out her Q with no consequence, she'd just be a better Zerath. While standing on it, Tilia's Q only shoots one projectile instead of five. To compensate for all of this, it'll refund 50% of the cooldown and also cost one mana. This mechanic makes ability really cool to see from a game design perspective. It forces both you and the enemy to play around the warped ground and plan out when it'll disperse. On the flip side, it also makes it harder for Talia to play poke in teamfights rather than burst. It would be awesome to see other abilities added to League that played around something like this. Who knows, maybe the next champion can absorb different buffs from a different jungle camp to diversify the gank and clear path or something. I <laughs> wish we'll think it. Anyway, that sums up our video for today. Thank you guys so much for watching, and don't forget to join our Pro Guides family at ProGuides.com. We offer exclusive giveaways and classes that you won't catch anywhere else, so stay tuned and don't forget to like, comment, and subscribe. We'll see you guys back in the next video, but don't forget, stay safe, stay healthy, and have a wonderful day. Peace.